Today, we are going to learn how to blind stitch applique. And I know a lot of you have seen this pattern uh, called Moon Over Mountain. Um, it's a wonderful classic um, pattern, but a lot of people shy away from it because it's the A word. Some people aren't wanting to do hand applique. And I decided to make a queen size quilt and thought, you know, I am gonna try blind stitch applique. So I'm gonna share that with you today. And I can guarantee you, once you know how to do it, you'll find all kinds of uses for it, besides hemming pants, <laughs> if you need to do that. Um, in the pattern, uh, we give the full size uh, shapes for you. This is the large mountain, this is the large moon, and then here's the smaller one. And I'm just working with the smaller one today for our demonstration. Now, the first thing that I do is um, lay some freezer paper with the, the wax side down on top of the pattern and I trace the shape. And then cut out the shape. So here's the shape. And then I have pressed it to the back of my fabric. And this is freezer paper. So the waxy side presses to the fabric. And then at this point, I'm going to take and trim a quarter inch. And you could eyeball the quarter inch, but I think it's just as easy. I have to eyeball it on the round one, but um, it's just as easy to do it, you know, with the rotary cutter. Oh, I pulled my rotary cutter, it needs a new blade. <laughs> okay, so I have um, created a shape here now, and you can see on the, the moon that I eyeballed this quarter inch around, and it can be a little more than a quarter. Then I'm gonna use a glue stick, and it doesn't have to say fabric glue stick on it. Just any glue stick will work. And you're gonna to wanna to have a piece of paper down underneath because I'm going around the outside edge with my glue stick and I'm on the paper and I'm on the fabric. Oh, need to get a little more glue stick going here. There we go. And did you know to keep these fresh, if you stick them in the vegetable drawer in your refrigerator, they stay, they don't dry up as quick. Okay, now um, I just pull the fabric over the paper and it wants to come up to the paper. And you just push it down. And you can see it overlapping a little bit on this, um, the circular shape. It won't do that on the other shape. See, here's the other shape I've already done, the mountain. Um, oh, there's no glue right there, so we're gonna put a little glue. I probably wasn't fast enough here. <laughs> this is such a tidy way to work. And I found I could reuse the freezer paper about three times. Like if you had to make 30 of these or something, uh, maybe you just cut out 10 patterns because you can reuse them. So there, that's all done. Now it looks all tidy and uh, so you take and your shapes and I'm making a pillow and I've started one so that I can uh, stitch on it. I've already st stitched on the mountain here and I'm gonna want to put the next one down and I, you know, use my ruler so that I get them even and, um, Make sure when I 
uh, trace my pattern. I put a little arrow at the top. I mean, I don't think you'd get it wrong, but it's better to have a little arrow at the top. Then you know for sure that you did it right. So if I want to have one inch between them, I've left one inch, this is where it's going to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin in right now. And then the second step is to slide the moon in so that where the paper is, that's right the edge that is, there we go. So, and I go ahead and put a pin in here. And then I put a pin through the two of them. Excuse our phone call. <laughs> <laughs> well, John got it, thank goodness. So now I've got two moons, at, or two mountains with moons, and I'm gonna have a third one over here. And my thought, since I was gonna do this demo, I wanted to make it into something. So this is gonna be a pillow. And I thought that would be really cool. So you could add some stitching to it also. I could. So um, what you do first is to stitch around the moon, and then you stitch around the mountain. So this moon is all stitched and actually the paper's removed too. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So um, I made a little chart for Val to get a picture of while I get started here. This is what a blind hem stitch looks like. It's usually about three or four stitches and then it jumps in with the zigzag. Three or four stitches, jumps in and the fold of your hem goes right on that line. So you're stitching right beside the fold. And um, I took and played a little bit with how much I wanted it to jump in. If I was using a heavy fabric, I was, you know, like a, a canvas or something, I would have this wider. That's the stitch width. The stitch length is this part. So I made the stitch width two and the stitch length 1.5. But I would suggest that you play around. I thought that was too big. So I came down and this is what I ended up with. And I did it in white so you could see it. Now, the kind of thread that I'm using is called monofilament thread or invisible nylon and there's a lot of different brands of it. And um, the spool is sitting up here on my machine. You see that little piece of white? This is called a finger cot, and this is something people use when, like if they broke their finger and they have um, a brace on it or something. So it's a medical kind of thing. And I used to be able to just go in the drugstore and buy them. Well. I can't find them now, so I don't even know if they make them anymore. And I don't know if you absolutely have to have one either, but it was suggested when I learned how to do it, so that was what I did. So I'm all ready to go here, and I am finding my nylon thread because it you can't even see it. I mean, that's the whole point of it. And I like to hold it when I start and I leave a good tail of thread because um, I do not want to have to thread this again. <laughs> See, you learn from experience when you make a whole queen size quilt. I'm gonna stop, you can kind of see how my foot is almost to the edge of my turned under applique. Go slow again so we can see it. Exactly. Okay. There, it's going to jump over. One, two, three, four. And I don't sew over pins. Uh, 
um, I just find, um, I had times when I got sewing too fast, sewed over pins, broke needles. So I just made it a point not to sew over pins. Okay, when you get to the top of your mountain, it's not gonna be an exact point because you have three pieces of fabric that you're kind of going through. So I put the needle down and do a couple pivot stitches because I want to make sure. Oh, I went and sewed on the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, you can still go back and sew your moon down. I now. can. You can see that once you get all that, you know, prep work done, the actual sewing is not a big deal. You should just hop right over to that other one. Okay, I will just do that. So I can, and you can take a look at the quilt again. Why don't you look? Oh, take, I will have do them that. take a look at Laura's quilting because I think she did a fabulous job with it. Just changing up the the line work and doing some of those circles. Yeah, you can see how fast I can go when everything is all prepped. <laughs> <laughs> not that this is supposed to be a race, you know, that's not what we're into here. And I am positioning the needle just so that um, my stitches, um, the straight stitch part always is along the edge. I don't want it to jump over and get on the mountain. You know, I also really like these flat-headed pins. I don't know if you've ever used them. Uh, some, they call them flower head pins too. Uh, but they're so easy to grab a hold of. I'm gonna make sure I leave this long though because I'm gonna do the other one after we're finished here. Now, to show you what we do to uh, take the paper out. And here's a piece of paper that I took out of here. And see, it's going to get wet because I'm gonna squirt bottle it. And you think, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's ruined, but it isn't because when I press this down, it'll get flat again. And you can also see where it tore out and the little stitch marks, but it still works. So I come up and just trim right beside the stitching lines. So it's, you know, approximately a quarter-ish. You know, I'm not getting my ruler out. You can see that paper. And, you know, it's hard to pull out at this point just by itself. But when I get it wet, that loosens the glue is what it does. So, making a big mess of it, and that's because I'm trying to hurry. <laughs> and I probably should have let it sit for a good five minutes before I started. But I think you're gonna get the point here. Yeah, see, it hasn't sunk in very good. I 
can see right now. So normally you let it sit for a few minutes. And I then... let it sit for five minutes. The and water, uh-huh. Yeah, to because I glue. want the water mm -hmm. to get clear down here. Right. And so this side might come better now. We'll see. Since I was messing around. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I pulled this part away from the paper to start with. Then it's easier just to pull it. See how nice this one pulled out? I know, it's because you weren't on video. <laughs> I know, and it was because I, I waited. Yeah, this one isn't pulling out good at all. It's going to get some more um, water on it. I'm going to do the water from this side because it's not Loose going through the, the layer of the background. Mm -hmm. Kind of like when you do English paper piecing and you um, want to reuse your pieces of English paper piecing, uh -huh. you do that where you oh, do you where you undo the glue. I don't get it wet. Oh yeah, see it's pulling right out now. Mm -hmm. Now, but you know I made a mess of it, so we're gonna do that. <laughs> well, you won't forget this part, will you? <laughs> I always, you know, I taught junior high home ec, and years ago. Remember my very first year of teaching, and the, the head teacher told me what I taught for how long, and I had to teach pies. And I practiced all weekend in my apartment on pie shells. And so Monday morning, I go in to demonstrate pie shells with the kids, and my pie shell all sunk into the middle of the, the pie pan. So I told the kids, okay, if you can do better than me, you can have an A. Well, everybody got an A, so. But I learned a lot, you know. It's, you know, when you have to be in front of a bunch of kids, uh, you have to have a little bit of sense of humor too, once in a while, <laughs> when you aren't trying to. Okay, now what I would do, I'm gonna let this dry and then I will press it. But you can see that um, it's really pretty easy to do. And you saw how nice this one came out. So you know that now. Wait. It's on the floor next to you. Oh. <laughs> so this is normally what it looks like when it comes out. You just see those little uh, needle places. And then I just use this again and I press it down and I can do it three times. So have fun with your um, machine uh, blind hem stitch. And just remember, it's an easy way to get imagery when you're in situations like this. And I have found myself in different situations where I thought, oh, I just don't want to hand stitch that whole thing. And so I would turn and do something like this. So.